On this week's show, I spoke with Shifa McGuinness of McGuinness Forwarding. McGuinness were established in 1991 and have since become an industry leader in European logistics services. To this day, McGuinness now operate from several offices and yards across the UK and Ireland with the client list of some of entertainment's biggest names. Schieffer currently works as an executive tour coordinator within the company and has been a part of numerous concert tours with acts such as Pink, Adele, Fleetwood Mac and many more. Schieffer's passion towards her family's business is something to really appreciate and I'm excited to see what aspects her drive will bring to the company in years to come. I always enjoy speaking to Schieffer and getting an insight into her hectic schedule and I hope you will too. So let's see how we got on. Hey Shifa. How are you? How are you doing? Good, how are you? Not too bad. A bit more, um, still a bit nervous doing these to be honest, but uh, getting there, you know. Yeah, I watched it, oh, I watched one of them. But you, yeah. you come across really well in them. Sorry? You come across really well in them. Ah, cheers, I appreciate it. It's absolutely brand new stuff to me, so, uh, yeah. you know, I'm just... Uh, just trying to stay busy and keep keep the head fresh during the during the time that it is. Yeah, it's kind of nice um, distraction. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of fun to just be chatting away as well. It's easy. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so come here, tell us. Um, thanks again for coming out, obviously. And um, I know it's pretty sunny out there, so um, fair yeah. play to you. What what's uh, what have you been doing with McGuinness these days? Have you had to stop work altogether, or what have you do to adapt? Well, obviously the live events and stuff have stopped. They won't be going ahead till next year. Mm. So we're doing a lot of specialized stuff, like wide loads, high loads. So it's kind of machinery out of the UK and Europe. Okay, cool. So it's just mainly to keep the guys going. Like they're not out on tour, obviously. So just keeping them busy is the main thing. So is McGuinness is McGuinness based in Ireland, or like I know you said to me before that you do a bit of European stuff is it completely international or are you still operating throughout Europe our yard is in the UK so everything works out of there and then yeah it's European tours North Africa Russia um but yeah mainly out of the UK and is the main part of your business events or like do you do do you do uh, like different services mainly touring yeah yeah it's all like it's all music tours live events and stuff but we do do like now it's it's perfect because we have done that specialized work before so we're used to it but yeah no it's all touring that we do okay and i know you're like your position itself you um you're a tour co- coordinator what's so what's involved in that so basically i get the schedule and i put together the route so i decide what route they're going to take and then i'll advance the tour so it's basically getting permits together because every European country will have different restrictions. So I have to go through the route and just advance it that way. I'll get in touch with the site coordinator. Okay. And, like figure out parking and logistics in the venue. And um, then sometimes I'll have double drivers, triple drivers doing a drive if it can't be done in one drive. Mm. So I have to organize all their flights, hotels and stuff like that. Um, and because I there's, a, have, there's a limit that people can actually drive isn't that right there's only yeah. a certain amount of hours people can do a day yeah and sometimes they will route it in such a way where the drive's too long to do for one driver so one other another driver will go out and sit in the truck do a shift himself and then the other driver will take over so that's kind of they're the grueling tours though like that'd be back-to-back shows and like they're the big tours that that would be happening on yeah yeah so you um like you 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 yourself at the moment would you be busy or like is it fairly relaxed at the way things are So it's relaxed at the moment um sort of at the start of lockdown obviously everyone just started rescheduling and everything and trying to get their dates in for next year because I think it's going to be mad busy so everyone wanted to lock their dates in and I think everyone just sort of copied and pasted their dates onto next year so everyone kept their slots so I had a good bit of work to do at the start of lockdown, just organizing all that and putting everything together for them. But now it's it's calmed down a lot for us. And I don't think it'll get going until next year. Um, like festivals and stuff. Yeah, like yeah. Summer, I think, will be really busy. But the first thing we have booked out is February, Harry Styles February. And I can't see anything happen before then. I don't even know. Okay. Like, that's, yeah. That's yeah, because it's... it's um. Even like, I was hoping, you know, you might have seen some sort of maybe winter activity of some sort, but 
I think it's the same, same with everyone else. Yeah, again, like the general haulage for us, like the specialised like equipment, we moved back and forth the UK and Europe for us is keeping us going, which is great, keeping the drivers busy. But yeah, no tour work, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so when you're working on tours, like I know you guys have a relationship with MCD, I'm pretty sure, isn't it? Yeah. Is that sort of how, how you'd, you know, you'd work with them as a promoter on all their events or is it just, do you work with all sorts of promoters? We actually don't really work that closely with MCD. Um, we work with the production manager, obviously predominantly. We know like there'll be side coordinators and stuff down at the venue that we'll know from MCD and stuff like that, but we don't actually work directly with them. And would you ever have to come across, say like the artists or any sort of management team of, say, cause I know you work very closely with like bands and, you know, yeah. superstar performers and stuff. Do you ever have to work closely well, with them? It'll mainly be, so their production manager is sort of who we're trying to impress. Um, so working very closely with them and. And we, how does that work? So each band or each artist would have their own production manager. So each artist has a production manager who's in like, who's in charge of, the whole production, putting the production together. Um, so there'll be obviously a light team, video, all that, but he or she will pull it all together and put okay. the production actually together. So we're in constant contact with them, just time-wise, obviously keeping them updated and stuff, bending changes on their schedule, they'll obviously have to let us know. But yeah, no, we're, we're in direct contact with the production manager, it wouldn't be directly with the bands and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So the stuff you'd be transporting, that's like, like you, you obviously operate huge articulated lorries, uh, 40 foot trucks and, and stuff like that. Like it would, would, would one set or one, I suppose, event, would it just be one truck load or how many are we talking? No, pink was 43 trucks and that's the biggest one. 43 I've trucks. Yeah, it was crazy. It was Christ. meant to be 34 and it jumped to 43 in the height of summer last year. So we had 81 trucks out on the road at one time last year so 43 for pink and as, as I said that's the biggest I've ever done 20 before with Adele and at the time like when I had just started working here that was the biggest tour I'd seen so 20 but yeah that leap to 43 was pretty big now there are one truck tours dad started out doing like one truck tours it just depends on the tour there's smaller productions um so yeah, it goes up to it goes up to high numbers though. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, so what what like what are you moving? You're moving, say, the stage, like every aspect of the whole. Everything. Business. Yeah, really. Yeah. Down, to, down to desks in the production office. Like it's it's everything. It's stage lights, all the equipment. So does that mean every single part of the production, let's say, has to fit into a specific venue? I'd imagine that's going through the production manager's head when they're organizing the event itself or yeah, the exactly. tour. Yeah. Yeah. No, like that's all that's all decided upon before. Um, how big the production is going to be and what venues they're going to they're going to tour. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, you mentioned there that you um, your father there. I know it's a family-owned business. What's it like working for your old man? Um, it's tough sometimes. Okay. We we get on really well though, so we can call each other out. Um, <laughs> which is nice. Like I, we wouldn't work otherwise. Um, but he's great. Like the amount of responsibility and stuff I had starting off. I would never have had anywhere else because he, he just trusts my judgment. Yeah. Um, which is obviously great. Um, but no, we do have, we do have our run-ins. Like we, we disagree sometimes, but it's nothing we don't work out very quickly. Yeah, of course. Of course. And was there many people working in the company as well? As So as, we've as got about 23 drivers and um, yeah. yeah. And then there's six office staff. Well, any, I know you guys, there's contractors as well, like um, definitely driving contractors that come in, I suppose, yeah. during the high season with you. I've, def I've dealt with a few of them in the past myself. Yeah. Um, so you said um, Pink there, for instance, is 43 trucks. Um, how many different productions have you worked on? Like, uh, like which, one, which one do you think would be your favourite off the top of your head? I think Pink would be my favourite just because it was such Jack. a huge production and she brings such an energy to the show. Um, but yeah, because it was 43, it was an interesting, it was an interesting production. And she, there was a chandelier as part of her production, which took up one truck alone. So okay. it was, it was, yeah, it was amazing. And I just think she's such an amazing performer. I think that was probably my, my favorite last oh, year. 
like where did you did you follow or did you manage the tour like the whole way around Europe? I yeah. imagine she went to a few different countries, was it? Yeah, it was actually it was quite a long tour. It was all through Europe, yeah. And what happens if somebody like if you like one of your trucks stop doesn't get through the customs or something? Has that ever happened? Um, like there's definitely been some challenges and sometimes with ferries not going or if you know act of god or we can't get mm. there there have been shows that have had to be cancelled due to mainly weather but we've never had a we've never not gotten to a gig because of customs and stuff that's sort of on us to get done in advance and make sure it's done on time and all that kind of thing okay. so that's never that's never been a massive issue but um definitely delays because of weather and stuff ferries that would be the main sort of thing yeah yeah like this like I, I imagine the show must go on even say for instance the chandelier didn't didn't show up at an event like is there anything that you come across that would have to... like if, if if the other 42 trucks are making it the 43rd is going to make it too so it's not yeah, yeah, yeah. that one wouldn't be there um but yeah, no, there, we had to cancel a show in Dublin last year because of the weather. And like the thing is, when they're routing, we we just get the route. So they decide on the route and then they send it to us. Some production managers will send us the route and say, hey, can you give me some advice? Does this look feasible? Um, will everything work on this? And that's great because then we have the opportunity to say, no, that drive's too tight. You're not going to make that. But a lot of the time, we don't get that heads up. So you know, sometimes the drives will just be too tight and one ferry is cancelled and we won't make it, um, which is what happened last year. We had to cancel a show in Dublin. Which show um, was that? It was Nicki Minaj. Okay. Yeah, so... Because um, you do hear about these things in the news, sort of, there's this gig being pulled. Like, yeah, now and... I had a few people on to me about it, going, oh, was that you? Um, and just, they... because, just because it was too tight? Yeah, it was difficult. They were, they were driving from... Burning to Dublin, which is tight anyway overnight, and the ferries were all cancelled because there were storms. So there's just no. I think half the trucks got there because the promoter always wants us to do our best to get there anyway. Mm. Um, even even if we don't think it's going to happen, just insurance wise, we just need to we need to try our best because if we don't make an effort to get there, the insurance won't pay out if the tours or if the show is cancelled. Yeah, of course. So we had half the trucks there, I think, or maybe four were delayed and didn't make it. And how does that work um, on, like, say, like, if the budget obviously gets blown, the gig gets cancelled, does it get rescheduled to a later date? Or, or how does yeah, it work? They normally, they normally tack it on at the end. Okay. Oh, yeah. I get you, I get you. So, so that yeah. they move on to their next show and then... Yeah, we were back it. to Glasgow then. That's the annoying thing. We had to go back to Glasgow. So it was Birmingham, Dublin, Glasgow. That's what I'm saying about the scheduling. Sometimes it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, but yeah. it works money wise for them. It's it's obviously a money making show or like a high earning show venue. So we went to Birmingham, Dublin, and then made it or made it to Dublin. The show didn't go ahead, and then we went back to Glasgow. Okay, okay. And are these people like these promoters? Are they difficult to work with? No, no, they're normally great. Are they? Yeah, especially in Dublin, like that. That show in Dublin was great because it was Dublin. We knew the guys from MCD and it was it was all just a bit of a team effort trying to decide because they waited. We they we waited. They waited for the trucks, but it was just too late. Like they wouldn't have been able to get it up and running on time. Doors yeah. were at six and I think the trucks would have pulled in at about seven. Like it just didn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. You obviously need a rigging team and everything. Yeah. You know, to put everything together yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, so I suppose like you obviously come across a lot of people in the industry. Um, is there anybody that you can think of that, you know, I suppose inspires you or, you know, has um, helped you a lot so far? Well, Caroline Downey's work ethic has inspired me since I was young. Um, Who's she, Caroline uh, Downey? She's uh, works in, used to work in MCD, was it? So she's involved in MCD, yeah. And she is Hosier's manager. Oh, yeah. Uh, she's the manager for an artist called Lyra as well. But, um, Lyra is uh, Irish as well, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of her. Um, so she, yeah, her work ethic has always been a bit of an inspiration for me. She just has so much going on and just remembers, seems to remember every single detail, no matter what's going on. And 
she sees everything, which I love. I had the opportunity to work with her last year on Housier. And I just feel, even just working with her, sort of brought out those qualities in me, I feel. I really enjoyed yeah. working with her. But also, I went out with Def Leppard, aside from trucking. Um, mm. Production manager, Faye McMahon, who's the production manager from Bray, gave me the opportunity to go out as an assistant on that tour, which is amazing. Okay. And when I was out there, just any crew, all crew members would inspire you because they're on the bus sleeping during the night from venue to venue, getting into bed sometimes at half three in the morning, waking up at the crack of dawn, like running on empty all of the time and just getting it all done. So yeah, down to the riggers and the carpenters, like they would all sort of inspire you. We've also worked with some amazing production managers that stay so calm in certain situations that I w- wouldn't imagine being able to do. So they're pretty inspiring as well. Do you not think so? Anytime I'm, I'm sort of with you yourself, you always seem to be fairly well organized. Uh, yeah. I think, so. I think you have it under control. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt yourself there, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I know I, you know, you obviously see a lot of the riggers and the crew. Um, I think like the hours they work is is nearly dangerous. I think that has to be looked at yeah. myself because, you know, people could do twenty hours, twenty hours a, a a day or something. You know, a couple of days in a row and expect yeah. expect to get working at ridiculous heights. You know, it's it's not very yeah, safe. It, it is, and I I, it's just an old sort of culture. I I don't know how long it will last without being changed in some way. There's always new rules and regulations coming in, even for us drivers wise. Like the driver now is told that he can't. So the driver has a bed in his truck. Okay. They have bunks. And for them, when they're out on tour, that's that's where they want to sleep. They're all, their, all their stuff is there. And there are regulations now in Europe that say that they have to go into a hotel. And we have to show receipts for them being in a hotel. And that's the last thing they want. They don't want to drive all night and then have to go to some random hotel. They, they don't want that, but that they are the regulations. So I think there will definitely be changes in the industry, in our industry anyway, because it's just not sustainable in some ways. So yeah. I think there definitely will be some more um, rules introduced. Mm. Um, the trucks that the, the guys drive, um, I know you have, uh, you have your own C license, don't you? Yes. Right, have, you ever, have you gotten it yet? Yeah, no, I did. I got it. Got it a couple of years ago now. How hard are they to drive? Um, it, I'm, everyone's always very surprised when I tell them that I got my license, but it's actually okay. The jump from a car to the ridge, so you have to do a, you have to do a rigid test, which is a smaller mm-hmm. like rigid truck, and then you do the articulated truck license after that. And the jump from the car to the rigid, I think, was more difficult than the jump from the rigid to the artic. Um. Okay just getting used to the size, you know, the size, but reversing the Arctic is difficult because you're turning right and it's going left and it's hard to get your head around. But once it clicks, mm. you've got it. So it, it, it was, it was a, it was a tough, it was a tough exam to take. I got the shingles the week I was doing the exam. Like I was so stressed about it. I, I don't think I should have told anyone I was doing it. I kind of, I decided I was going to get the license just because I wanted the drivers to see that I was making the effort and I, I know my stuff. And if anything ever did go wrong, I could, I could handle the situation by myself, just take the keys and get it done myself. And never had to hop in. Not yet. Not in emergency situations. Anyway, I have done, um, like a bit of driving, but it hasn't, is it hasn't been an emergency yeah. so it's been like sort of I, i'll definitely do a double drive here or there if next summer when we're really busy i would like to try and get out and get a bit of experience hmm. it so makes you, all the difference when i'm handling situations from the office being able to know myself yeah yeah I I like it's a perfect like especially being a manager like the, the, you know the last thing you want to do it say if I was I was a driver myself, the last thing I want to hear is orders from somebody who's never experienced yeah. what it's like, especially like such a, I suppose a, a difficult like task that these guys have to yeah. have to operate, you know. So 
I'm sure they feel that too. I'm sure they, you know, it's it's easy for someone to sit in an office and go, oh, well, just do that, hop in the truck and go down here. And sometimes it's just not that easy. So I'm sure the frustration would be there if if I didn't know and if I hadn't experienced it myself. Um, the guys are great, and they like they all text me when I got my my license. <laughs> I tell them I was doing my tests. They're all really excited and happy about it. So they're all great and going out on tour with them would be great. Like I'd love to do a couple of weeks and just even get to know them a little bit better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Some of the drivers have been working for dad, like they're drivers that have been here for 30 years. Um, so I know them pretty well at this stage. I've known me since I was very young. How old is the company? 30 years. 30 years this year. Yeah. Actually 30 years next year. Okay. Nine. Yeah. Jeez. Um, so do you think that, um, you're going to be saying you'll stay like as uh, working with McGuinness's or like the transport side, you know, for the long the long haul. Or can you see yourself taking any other directions? I've been tempted. I've been tempted to do. I'd love some like a part of me would love to be a production manager and get into the actual running of the show, but because it's a family owned company and because Dad. <clears throat> I had a one truck tour and sort of built it up from there. A lot of my drive just comes from pride of the whole operation. Mm. And I think that because I'm passionate about it, I'm, I'm good at it. So I don't know. I don't know if I ever would switch. I, I'm really happy at the moment. And I was meant to be doing primary school teaching before I decided to do this. And dad was going to sell it and just said, look, do you want to, do you want to give it a go for a year? See if you like it. And if not, I'll just sell it. Um, and I loved it. So I, I I want to stay here, just continue what he started and yeah, keep, yeah. The standards, keep the standards high. Yeah, absolutely. You do have a passion for like the entertainment <laughs> industry when I do chat to you. Maybe yeah. it's, so maybe it's an, an element you could just add to um to the Guinness down the line, but yeah, well, that's why that's why um, Faye offered to have me out on the Def Leppard tour because he just said, like, from a production manager's point of view, if you came out and worked on the tour beside me, you'd see what I need when I need it, and you'd be able to foresee things that I don't even I I don't see. Like, you would be able to come to me with a solution before I even see the problem if you can see it from my perspective. So, um, I mean, they're very different roles so I don't know if I'd be able to do both but something I definitely consider down the line when I get a little bit older it's just tour life is difficult like I did four weeks of it and it was tough you are in a different city every day and yeah. you definitely like the crew becomes your family so I actually was surprised at how little I missed my own family <laughs> but I don't know as I get older is that something that I'd be willing to do go away for so long like you could be out for three months at a time there are a lot of people that I know that just travel all the time which is amazing but just as I get older I don't know if that's something that I'd want yeah yeah this is kind of best of both worlds I get to work in it but stay here and when you're on tour for four weeks <laughs> is that is that more or less seven days a week yeah, I mean, like it'll, you might get it. Well, you do get a day off. So some, some days you'll have a back to back show and then some days you'll have a day off, which is obviously incredible. Um, mm. You might have a day off in San Diego or so. Well, yeah. you were over in the States. What, what, what tour was this when you were, <laughs> you were away for four weeks? <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> I was over with Def Leppard in 2018. Oh, so right, right. Sorry. US leg. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I did, did four weeks in America with them. And again, you're just, you're wrecked and you don't feel it. You're, everyone's on such a high and the adrenaline's running all the time that you don't actually feel tired until you come home and realize that you've been going. Like even the days off, you're with the whole crew and it's just, yeah, like it's grueling. It's, it's grueling. And it's, it, it's definitely a, a certain type of person can handle it. Mm. Um, and I don't know if that certain type of person's me. I like my home comfort, so I don't know, but. Yeah, it's really, I think a lot of people that work in this industry do it for the love of it. And, yeah. you know, like, it's like you say, people could live off a small bit of sleep and it's, it's such an active <laughs> industry, I suppose, an active job, like you're constantly on your feet. Um, you know, and then 
having like that hum of the background music, you know, and like things are just starting off. Like that's the, that's the sort of bits I love about setting up events. Uh, so, the music. You know, the yeah. music in your chest when you're backstage is, yeah. Do you know, so it's, it's, um, yeah, it's, again, like you said, it's, for, it's not for everybody, but it'd be interesting. I'd, I'd be interested to see how, how you're doing it. To be I honest. think people get hooked as well. Like, I think if you go out and you love it, it's hard to give up the money's great when you're out there so it's it, it is difficult to give up it's a, it's a lifestyle you know so for someone to come home then and settle down would, would obviously be such a change mm. um but like anyone that i've met that's done it for a long time yeah absolutely loves it wouldn't give it up and how how does the like the wage sort of is it a fixed you know one month contract or something like that or do you work well, obviously obviously, day by day it depends on the it depends on the role obviously but yeah it's a contract and then like over hours or whatever if, if anything comes up yeah 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 um so i suppose in in um in terms of work coming up and going into next year i know you mentioned that the only thing you have booked in is harry styles 2021 20, february yeah um is there anything that was cancelled that hasn't been rescheduled? Um, no, like everyone's everyone's pretty set on what they're doing at this point, I think. Um, because as I said, like the dates were kind of already set in stone for this year. So everyone just switched over. But it'll be interesting to see the tours that were booked for next year or that we're planning to go out next year that, sorry, weren't necessarily booked. What will happen with them? Will they push back or... Will they do it next year as well, and will there just be? Yeah, that's what that's what I'm kind of worried about as well. You know, is it just going to be? Well, not worried. I'm as far as excited as more. Interesting to see, yeah. Do you know? <laughs> um, but is that common as well? Like people would say, production manager would book in dates a couple of years in advance. Like are tours that far planned ahead? Um, maybe not a couple of years in advance, but I'd say, <clears throat> like we know what's happening next year. Um, I know this like climate's completely different, but generally you know probably a year in advance. We wouldn't be booked though. We wouldn't be booked a year in advance. They would have the date set with the promoter, but we would get the schedule. We'd be I'd quote it out probably five months before. Okay. Depending on the tour, probably about five months before, six months maybe. Um, and then yeah, suppliers would be booked a, a couple of months in advance, but generally the the dates are set but nothing else is done okay so you, you rarely take any you know say i couldn't ring you up tomorrow or could i and <laughs> order you know book four trucks in to go up and down the country for the rest of the week is that like i know it's not a busy time right now but is that a generally, if, generally if you rang me in june i would have no trucks to give you like we'd okay. make it work like with the pink thing it was 34 trucks and it became 43 like overnight in the summer. So we have to figure it out. But um, <clears throat> no, summer, the trucks would all be all be uh, spoken for. And is there any is there any massive events or massive sort of tours that were sp supposed to go out this summer that you're, you know, that have been stalled? Is there anything big that you could let us know about? Um. Like they're all, see, I, I don't know that they're going to go ahead for sure. So I, I wouldn't want to name them. Yeah, just, yeah, of course. Um, but just in case anything happened, but like this was, this was meant to be the biggest year we've had. By January 2020, we were booked up until the end of October, which is mental. Yeah, yeah. Um, so because normally it comes in drips and drabs like it'll you know we'll get work for october in march it, the fact that it was all just solidly booked out um was crazy so next year yeah the, i think there'll be some fairly big tours out next year yeah yeah yeah. i'm looking forward to it anyway um i just want to go back cheaper uh to caroline she <laughs> you mentioned caroline's work ethic yeah. Can, you, can you give me more of an insight on what she's like, you know, being working around her? Like, do you, do you work with her or is she more of like a friend that you sort of... Well, she's she's a really close friend of my mum. Um, <clears throat> but she had me in doing um, 
work for Hosier's tour this year. So, sorry, not this year, last year, last December. Mm -hmm. um, she is just, I, like, I don't know. She surrounds herself with people that are just so on the ball as well. So she's got a, like a great team of people around her. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how to describe her. She's a force to be reckoned with. She has, she's just, she's just so on the ball. She forgets nothing, as yeah. I said earlier. Um, she sees everything and she's obviously done an amazing job with Hosier as well I don't know if she like was was that her <clears throat> you know was that her career before was she always managing bands no she wasn't she was never planning to um Hosier was actually um in school with her kids and okay. um yeah I, I think she sort of fell into that role I don't think that was anything she was ever planning to do um he asked her to come on board just because um he was sort of picked up out of school he he did a, a talent show in Jared's and um was sort of picked out from there um so she because she had known him since he was young and was in the industry I think just sort of fell into it mm. yeah he's a natural talent I was there anyway yeah. <clears throat> from a young age as well yeah yeah absolutely um, well, Sheepa, I um, have to thank you again for joining me to today. Of course, thanks for having me. Um, ta taking some time. I'm looking forward to when we can actually catch up properly. I think we could do that now and have a drink. Yeah. And um, get in the garden somewhere. Okay. Chat a bit further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair thanks, play. Yeah. Thanks, Sheepa. See you later. Talk to you soon.